Good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you, Asma. So it's, it's almost 12, 12, 10, 12, 15. It's a lunch time. So I know most of you are dreaming of lunch. I'll, I'll try to make it um, short as possible as I can. Um, and by the way, I, I do have a Sri Lankan flavored English accent. They call it Singlish. Um, so please bear with me. And I, sometimes I tend to speak fast. And at this occasion, I'll try to speak slowly as much as I can. Do inter please do interrupt if I'm going too fast. Um, so as Asma said, uh, I do work in the architecture team. So this team, as no one did, um, we are responsible for the complete WSO2 product architecture, mostly technical uh, aspects of the product. So we, we get to work with each and every product of the WSO2. Even though I'm not primarily working on the API manager side, we, we have a responsibility to look at all the product aspects, including API management to integration, all these aspects, and even Ballerina. So a little bit about myself. So I started with Carbon Kernel. I was a developer at the Carbon Kernel project. So that's the base of all WSO2 products that, that we are using today. Um, but now we are changing that to be Ballerina. And then I started working on WAM. I know some people heard about WAM, right? So when we first released WAM, we had um, a little resistance because we, we've been changing the process of applying patches to a WAM-based model. But I think now it's settled. All good. Um, so 2016, November, I joined a Ballerina team. But since then, I'm sort of stuck in the team. Um, I work in the compiler and the runtime team, as a, and, and also I, I work a bit of uh, Ballerina evangelism team as well. Anyway, so that's about myself. Let's get to the topic. Um, so the very first keynote today, he mentioned that perfection is an state. It's not an state, right? It's, some, it's something that you cannot achieve. It's an ambitious. It's an am ambition that you're trying to achieve every day with short-term, long-term goals. So here we are today talking about another changes that you can introduce, introduce uh, to your existing API management solutions. So Nuan and Chris, they talk about API management. What is API management? If you look at the business requirement and the technical requirements, business requirement is all about securely unlocking your internal assets to partners and users so that they can create innovative applications around it. Right? So that's sort of a business requirement. Then you look at the technical requirement. It's two things. One is you having the control of your APIs. You need to control all your APIs. The second thing is you, you need to have visibility of all your APIs, what's going on in, in the gateway. What's going, what's flowing through in your API gateway, whether their uh, traffic is allowed, whether they are using too much resources, like rate limiting, all that. So there are two aspects, control and, and traffic delivery. Right? So, so it's nicely, we can nicely place all the API management components into this control plane and data plane. I think uh, Asanka, Paul, they, in their keynote, they mentioned about control plane and data plane. I think uh, with, with, with this, um, what do you call it, the Istio uh, and this uh, service mesh, this term is now popular, like control plane, data plane, but it's coming from like network, network world lo long before. So if you position um, the API managed components into data plane uh, and control plane, you can think of the API portal the publisher, all these components are in the control plane. Right? That's where people create APIs, publish APIs, and also they find and subscribe. You apply all the security, and everything happens at the control plane. So you can put some of these components into the control plane. And also, the, if you look at the data plane, you can think about this gateway. gateway. So that is where all your traffic flows. That is, that's the data plane component that we can talk about. So now, the hybrid API management is all about separating control plane from the data plane 
and deploying them in different places. It could be uh, your cloud environment, you deploy the control plane. In your data, you can deploy your data plane in your on-premise or any, any other cloud, separating out. Right? So I think I've all, almost uh, covered the topic of hybrid cloud API management. But let me go back to various approaches that we have today and, and compare uh, them based on their advantages and disadvantages. So what is on-premise model? That's what some people use today. It's like you deploy your complete API management solution on your enterprise network. Right? And then uh, sometimes that's good because everything is within your enterprise network, so you have the full control. Right? And then you can see what's happening and all that. So it's, if you look at it from a diagram perspective, it's something like this. You have your enterprise network boundary, and you have your control plane and the data plane all in the same network. And so, so in this diagram, uh, only the internal traffic flows through the gateway. But there, there can be another flavor where you expose your APIs to outside, but still everything is, everything is in your uh, network. So this is like on-premise API management deployment. So what are the pros and advantages of this? You have the complete control over your deployment. So it's similarly any, any, any on-premise deployment that you have. right? And, and all your backends are in the same network. It's good location-wise. Uh, latency and all that is good. And also, you are within the so certain data regulations, your country, your company, or your region. But if you look at the other side of the story, now you need to have uh, expert teams to handle all these other cases. And also, you have to uh, spend upfront on your deployments. Uh, so high total cost of ownership. So that's usual disadvantage that you get on your, uh, with your on-premise deployments. Right. So if you look at cloud API management, the other side of the story, here you deploy your uh, uh, control plane and the data plane in the cloud. It's a simple, 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 simple solution. Um, so here you can see uh, all your public uh, APIs, public access via the public interface. There are many delivery channels. Um, and, and also there are some APIs that are hidden that are within the network. So it's, this is your public area, and this is, there are some APIs that are, even, e even though they are in the cloud, they are not exposed to the outside world. They're only within, your, within that deployment. So there's another flavor of this, where only changes, there are backend services that are in your enterprise deployment, your local network. But now you want to expose them via the cloud model, like via the cloud uh, deployment. Now you get to see that there can be certain issues, because the cloud can be deployed in somewhere else. Your, your core services are deployed in your system. So there you can be, uh, I mean, if you look at all the Advantages, it's cost effective. You're not ma managing everything. You're outsourcing to some vendor. For example, WSO2 API Cloud does that for you. You can create an uh, organization, and you can uh, provision you all the API management solutions. And, and there can be WSO2 Cloud dedicated team that manages all your deployments for you. And all the scalability and everything is handled by uh, the cloud vendor. But the problems are, it's really inefficient if you ha have your services within your enterprise network, and if you want to expose them via cloud. Because when a request comes, it goes through the cloud gateway, and it then crosses the boundary, and it comes to your network. And, and also, your backend data now need to be exposed via, to the cloud and it goes via cloud. So 
now you need to think about all these regulations, data locality issues, all that. You have to think about that. Right? So, so there are various reasons. And also there are regional or country sensitive regulations and stuff like that. So the hybrid model, it really talks about uh, disaggregating control plane from the data plane and deploy your data plane, control plane in the cloud, but data plane in your enterprise network or in any place you want. So I, I do have a small demo at the end of the talk uh, to show you how it's done in the WSO2 API cloud. So here, the idea here, idea as I said, you have control plane, data plane, you deploy them in different locations. So this diagram explains that. So you have your API management side of it, for example, publisher, store, and everything in the cloud, somewhere in the cloud deployed. right? And all your services, backend services, and everything is in your enterprise network now. This channel could be a one-way channel from your enterprise network to the cloud. It doesn't need to be both ways. I, I'll explain that later. Right? So here now you can see uh, the customers or the delivery channels, they are all in your network. And your gateways are the data plane is in the network. This is all good. And the management happens in the cloud. So let's see why uh, this is uh, like, uh, good, because now all the management aspects, you can uh, give the responsibility to the cloud vendor, right? So they will take care of uh, uh, scalability and everything. So there are various models that are associated with uh, hybrid API management, especially the data plane. So this is one such scenario. And there's another concept called private jet mode, this part. It's talk about like one gateway per API. You have your backend core service, and you have a one gateway that is fronting uh, private uh, the API. So you can scale APIs differently. So this is uh, nice to resonate with the microservices or micro gateway that Chris talked about, right? So you can independently scale micro -ga your gateways uh, from other gateways. They are serving different traffic. Another one is the sidecar mode. So this comes from uh, Docker, Kubernetes, the pod concept, or the cell concept that Asanka and Paul talks about. You can create a pod or a cell that has the gateway and the, and the backend service. So they are, they are scaled uh, um, together. Like, so you have a cell, you scale the cell. So you get multiple copies of. Um, the data plane in this case. The next one is that we all know it's a centralized gateway. There's one gateway that is fronting multiple APIs. So, but this is, some people use that. But if you, this is, I think this is a good entry point to talk about my, micro gateways. That is why people use micro gateways in case if you want to uh, uh, scale certain API, API traffic differently from other other APIs. So let's look at, like, uh, I'm not going to go into the details of micro gateways because Chris, um, he, he covered micro gateways <laughs> nicely. And also, like, a fun fact uh, so last night, me and Chris, we cross check our slides. So we found out that we were both talking about the micro gateways, similar slides. Um, so we, we had a chat, and eventually Chris won. So he get to talk about micro gateways, and I got nothing out of it. Um, anyway, I had uh, some slides about gateway. Um, so because it's just to reiterate what I've been telling, uh, and the importance of micro gateways in a hybrid uh, API management uh, solution. So it's I think Chris covered all this. I'm not going to go into the details of. Uh, these characteristics. Uh, so the idea behind micro gateway, you have your control plane deployed in the cloud, and you can download some sort of a toolkit from the cloud. And that toolkit, from that toolkit, 
It can be in the cloud as well, or it can be something you download. But from the toolkit, you can generate a front time, generate a gateway. Right? So this toolkit can generate gateways for um, a normal VM, a bare metal, or it, it, it could generate a runtime for Docker, Kubernetes, or any, any platform that you are familiar with that can be configured. Right. So now if we expand this concept a little bit, you have a control plane in one cloud, and you can have your data plane or gateways in many different places. It could be on your IoT devices, your workstation, or in different other clouds as well. So it suddenly you can scale your data plane, and that's where the most traffic, traffic goes, the gateway. Right? So this increases high availability um, and also scalability. Right? So this is an uh, 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 int interesting fact about uh, this hybrid cloud API management. So next, yes, so this is uh, about micro gateways that we that we provide in, in WSO2. We, I think, this year, early this year, right? June. June, we released uh, a micro gateway component this, that is associated with our API manager. Um, and that's a very lightweight gateway that you can uh, start it maybe less than a second. And when you start that, it pulls uh, the configuration APIs and everything from the cloud. I'll show you a demo. But in the demo, I'm using not the micro gateway, but our existing gateway. Uh, because I think from the cloud, at the moment, we can't download micro gateways. We can only uh, download the existing gateway. OK. Any questions so far? I'll quickly do a demo on this. So I'm using our API cloud. So let me first log into the API cloud. OK. So I had to create my a different email for this, because all my email accounts are associated with cloud accounts, and they do have some um, warm microservices, like microservices that we develop for the warm solution. Everything is associated. So uh, I had to create an email for this. OK. So I logged into our uh, WSO2 API cloud. So this is the API publisher view. Right? I, I, I created an API yesterday because I don't want to go through creating a new API. I think some of you are familiar with creating APIs, and uh, no one also showed certain uh, screenshots of the API manager. So I, I do have an API that is the World Bank API. Uh, so when you, uh, the parameter, as a path parameter, when you give the country code, you get some details out of it. Right, so that's the API. Uh, and if I go to API store here, you can see that I already have subscribed to the API via an application. And that application is called World Bank Data. That's the application that I have developed, like a logical application that is in API Manager. So when you go there, you can see um, all the production keys, like consumer oath, consumer key, consumer secret, and everything. So to be on the safe side, let me regenerate the access token. Okay. So access token is regenerated now. And I can see certain curl commands that I need to invoke the API. Uh, API. So let me go back to the API. And when you go to the API view, you can go to the API console, and there you can see all your resources in the API. So here, I just have one resource, simple resource, and it accepts a code, a country code. So let me expand that. So I'll go ahead and try it out. Let's say GB. So this relies on the uh, the hotel network, so please bear with me. All right, so 
you can, not sure whether you see. This is, this goes through, this is a sample curl. So this goes through gateway.api.cloud.ws.com. So this request goes through the, the, the gateway deployed in the cloud. And you get some, some, re, some response. We are not interested in the data. So now, now the idea is you need to deploy your gateway, one version of gateway in your local machine. That, that's the demo I'm going to do. So I need to download. I need to somehow download a gateway that is configured with, with this control plane. Right? So I go to the API publisher. And you can see here on-prem gateways. You go to the on-prem gateways. Um, so when I was preparing for this, I download two gateways. So if you go to the documentation here, in the gateway documentation, here you can see there are two options. One thing, one is you can run your gateway as a Docker container, or else you can download the zip file of the gateway and run it anywhere. So let me go through the Docker side of it. Um, so I, I need to um, log in first. So let me copy this in my local machine. OK, I think I already logged in, so it should, it should go through. It asks the email address that I use to log into the cloud and the password. So login successful. Then I need, can pull the on-prem gateway. So I'm using 2.5.0 here. Let me increase the font size a little bit. And if you look at this, it's already uh, because I pulled it yesterday. It's in, in, in my local Docker uh, images. All right. So then it asked me to run a particular command, like Docker run command with certain parameters. And, and I have to pass certain environment variables that, are, that is like your organization key, the email, and the password that that we logged into cloud. So um, since I don't want to show, show my password, uh, I have a certain SH that has this um, command. So let me run this. So this is starting a Docker container. Um, so when, 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 when this product starts up, it communicates with the cloud. You also can look at uh, the status of it. For example, if you, uh, so now all two gateways are offline here, right? So w once the product is started up, this one of the uh, gateways should be online because now it's connected to the cloud. And also you can check your Docker, Docker PS. You can see a container has been started a few seconds ago. Uh, so this is still uh, the old gateway. So that's why it takes time to start up, maybe 30 to 40 seconds. Now, once it starts up, it tries to pull, store, communicate with the cloud and pull all the APIs that are there. So this step is basically about that. So I think when we, now we, go, we can go and check whether it's online. So it's, it's online now, all good. And here, the gateway name is the Docker image or the Docker container uh, ID. So you can cross-check that with uh, this, with, uh, this container ID. So, that's the con so if you run multiple containers, you can see all your containers at the moment. So I think it's up and running. So let me go back to the store and copy this curl command and execute in my local machine. So if I run it, it still goes to the gateway because it's, the URL goes to the gateway still. But I can change this to point to my local gateway. OK. 
can say localhost. By default, the port is 8243, and, and, and you can verify that uh, if you look at this port mapping available in your Docker container. Right? So, let, okay, all good. Okay, so we got a response from the. Now, I can also show you my um, etc host just to tell you that I'm not doing anything wrong. The local host is, local host is pointing to the local host. It's not routed to API gateways or anything. Right. All right, so what we saw here is it's how you could uh, download an on-prem gateway that is connected to your control plane. And likewise, you can like, boot up many containers, and you can do that on your local network on a, in a different cloud. And, and you can manage that here. In, in, in the Cloud Gateway. So this is just a demo of what I've been talking about. All right. I think this is, this is uh, the stuff that I wanted to cover today. Um, thank you all for listening. <laughs>